<coughs> so what do I feel is the conclusion or what do I think happens when we die? If we die in the Lord, we receive eternal life. If we die outside His grace, we do not receive eternal life. The implication is that the soul and body are destroyed rather than subject to eternal punishment. Those places in the Bible that definitely deal with the hereafter use of images and parables that suggest this has to be understood. The idea of eternal punishment comes, I believe, from a misunderstanding of passages that speak of God's judgment on Jerusalem the Jews and the Old Covenant as a nation rather than on individuals. The Old Testament types of judgment always result in the destruction of God's or Israel's enemies. Not doesn't result in their eternal torment. The first suggestion you run across in the Bible of eternal torment is in reference to the Jewish nation. Eternal destruction, not torment, is not just an emotional conclusion on my behalf, but I believe it's a biblical conclusion. Nevertheless, dealing with even sinners in a humane manner is certainly consistent with the character of God. Where the vessels of wrath are concerned, were they prepared for destruction or were they prepared for to be a subject of eternal torment? I believe the Bible tells us they were prepared for destruction. I don't pursue, uh, presume to tell God what is fair when He deals with uh, homosexuals or adulterers. I don't, I don't try to tell God what is fair and what's not fair. He, in His mercy and righteousness, will deal with people as He chooses. If there is some kind of eternal punishment or torment awaiting sinners, I don't believe you can find it in the Scriptures. The scriptures speak of something very significant. It's God's dealing with mankind and His establishment of a new covenant of freedom that replaces that old obsolete covenant of slavery. I believe that when people speak of a eternal torment in a hell. They are trying to put people under that slavery. Just my thoughts. Peace.